Um, so I was saying that, uh, you know, on the heels of the success of uh, Word Up, you didn't release a record the next year. And then you had Machismo. Uh, a couple of years later, Real Men Wear Black, Emotional Violence, and Face of Funk. All those albums had plenty of funk highlights. Um, but you never seem to be able to quite recapture the lightning in a bottle success of Word Up. Um, you know, so I'm wondering, you know, what do you attribute that to and what was, you know, going on during the, the late 80s and early 90s for the band? I kind of, you know, truthfully, I think we kind of, kind of just lost our way a little bit, you know. Um, the creative juices kind of ran out. Uh, I think we started to repeat ourselves a little bit. Uh, and uh, not only uh, musically or, or during the, the times with uh, rap starting to come in and, and funk starting to take kind of like a back seat uh, radio wise, uh, the changes in music, the musical changes that were happening during that time uh, affected us a little bit. And I just think we were running out of ideas, you know. I just think we had a long career. We started in the 70s, you know, and you can only maintain uh, uh, that level for so long, you know, before you kind of like run out a little bit. I think, like you said, we had great tracks. I think, you know, Real Men Wear Black was was good. I think uh, uh, we had a, we had some really funky stuff, but we just couldn't recapture that word up. And actually we tried to do uh, remakes of Candy, you know, and it just made me sick, you know, I, I was, I hated it, you know, <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, you know what, the best thing to do is just stop, you know, just stop, you know, and for now. Because it, it, it is, when you start doing that, Cameo was never about that. We weren't ever, we weren't ever about repeating ourselves and pandering to a certain, uh, pandering to a certain audience or to what's going on radio wise, you know. Got that great sunshine coming in, huh? I hear you. <laughs> you know, we were never about that, and I guess it's when you when you when you uh, when you start to realize that the sunset is starting to creep in. It's a tough thing to you know to realize that it's not going to continue. And you try, you try as like an old boxer, you know what I mean? You keep getting in the ring, uh, but the inevitable <laughs> outcome is around the corner. So the best thing to do is go out and not, and I don't mean go out. I just mean to just chill, you know, just stop for a second and, and see what happens. Let it go. I mean, we've had su great success. We did some great music, mind blowing, genre changing, uh, historic, uh, music, but to keep trying to do it sometimes uh, is not a good thing. Do you, do you ever like second guess it all and wonder a little bit like, um, you know, if maybe if we hadn't hit it that big at that juncture, if we just kind of had kept going in that slot or lane that we were in, maybe things would have been a little different or do you not even entertain something like that? No, nah, I don't entertain that because it happened the way it was supposed to happen. We were supposed to, you know, that was the way it's supposed to be. You know, at that time, at that at that moment, when Word Up, the biggest song in the country, you know, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't trade that. Now, that's the curse. That's the curse of it, though, sometimes. You try to repeat that magic, and it can only happen one time. Now, I mean, that way, like I said, we've had moderate success after that, but when you start trying to repeat and and do songs that sound like that song and do songs that sound like the next song, uh, no. Well, you kind of did that with style, like we talked about, but somehow you still, you know, regenerated after that. Yeah, 
after that. Yeah, we came back after that, which is good, you know, which is good. Um, I don't know. I, it's hard to explain. It's, it's hard to explain, but I think uh, things happen the way they're supposed to happen, Scott. Yeah. Uh, that's all I can say. Well, you know, your your honesty with it is just really refreshing and appreciated. Oh, thanks. Um, so, you know, I think we touched on before, but Cameo would go on to perform periodically, but didn't produce much in the studio. There was the one album, Sweet Sexy Thing, around 2000. So, mm -hmm. you know, what has everyone been up to for the most part, you know, in this 21st century? And when will we see, possibly see new Cameo music, do you think? Well, we've been pretty much touring. You know, we've been we've been on a touring thing. Uh, we've 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 always worked. You know, there were some times when we didn't work, and you know, I wrote a book, and you know, Larry's been doing his thing. Uh, you know, we all got into our families. You know, something that was a little difficult to do back then when everybody was so busy. But you know, we we got into families, and guys started doing their solo projects and getting into different things, and uh, and now cameo. Actually, I was in Atlanta the other couple weeks ago and there's some new music that's uh, being recorded and talked about hopefully we can uh, we can make it happen you know I just don't want to repeat of sometimes like like we were just talking about you try to recapture that magic and especially now being veterans and uh, people who've been in this business for 40 years uh, trying to compete with <laughs> <laughs> uh so you broke you cut off when you're talking about um you know competing 40 years later and you know competing with a different landscape yeah it's kind of tough to do that right now and unless you're true cameo has always been an act that's been true to ourselves we've never pandered to what was going on at the moment we've always pushed through that and did what we wanted to do uh, so we're going to come out with anything new, uh, the cameo thing. And at the same time, taking into consideration, uh, what's happening today. I don't think we we want to get the 18 to 24 year olds. You know what I mean? I don't think that that's something that we're going to go after, but I think that we have our core fans who are dying for new cameo music and we go after that. You know, we still have we still have fans who buy music and who, who want something a little different. We're tired of hearing the same thing on the radio. Cameo uh, will always be iconic and will always have uh, something to offer. And if we come out with the right songs, we can do it. Can I offer a little piece of advice? Please. If you do it, don't be afraid to come back hard, you know. Um, oh, no. There's so many, so many of these uh, bands, like the funk bands, and I don't want to pile on them because you know it's still a pretty solid record. But for example, Confunction just came back, and it, it's so mellow. There's virtually no funk on there. Um, yeah. So you know, I, I feel like they feel like they need to uh, pander to the uh, middle of the road or something like that. But you gotta, some of that's okay, but you gotta still bring the funk. Well, let me tell you something. I agree with you. I mean, I was happy to see that they came out with a new record because those are my man, those, you know, those are my boys, you know. Uh, but I kind of agree that they lost a little bit of that funk in them. Um, I'm doing a solo record now. Uh, I just released. Uh, I'm going to release a single uh, that was produced by Leon uh, Silvers the Third and his son Leon the Fourth. It's a ballad. It's going to be my first single. But I've got an EP that's coming in May that's got some serious funk on it. And uh, I've got a song called Automatic, which is rock funk in that cameo style. I've got a song called Barbarians, which, uh, which is another rock funk song that speaks to what's going on now with the Trump thing and political, the political climate that's happening now. You know how cameo loves to do that. I could not do a song that spoke to what's going on socially today. And I've got some funk stuff on there. I've got a couple of nice uh, jazzy uh, songs. I'll send them to you so I can, you know, I'd love to hear your your opinion and your take on what you think about it. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I thought that with everyone doing things, 
it was time for me. And I've released stuff in the past on my own, but this time I'm taking it really seriously. Uh, I've got a label. It's an independent project, of course, but I have uh, uh, a worldwide distribution. And uh, I'm excited for the project. I'm really excited for it. And I'd like for you to hear it and, and give me your, uh, your feedback after you listen to it. But it's got some funk on there, believe me. I would love to hear it, you know. Um, you got to have some funk, but also, and we didn't really touch on it before, but, you know, the groups that have that funk in them, you know, when they mm -hmm. do ballads or mid-tempo, there's some almost indescribable quality, at least I never found a way to describe it, you know, where there's somehow some of that, mm, that funk earthiness is still coming through on the mid-tempo and slow material. It's not you know, just sugary and watered down. It still has some of that. It's not just soul, but it still has a certain funk edge or something to it. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what infused a lot of our ballads back then, you know. Uh, me, I'm town, uh, Why Have I Lost You? You know, even though they were ballads, they weren't sugary, you know, syrupy kind of things. They still had that edgy, you know, the funk is what you make it you know and you can if you are funky then whatever you do like george said it's going to be funky actually that's what i always like to ask you know what what does funk music mean to you tommy jenkins what what is funk and if somebody asks you what do you tell them funk is funk is an experience funk is who you are you can't put it on like a coat. You can't take it off, you know, like you're taking off your hat or your scarf at the end of the day. You know, either you're funky or you're not. And it's something that it's almost like, you know, you're born with it, you know? That's when I look at Steve Arrington. You mentioned Steve, my man Steve. He's gonna be funky forever. He was funky in the beginning. You know what I mean? Uh, George, he was funky. He was. When he found his funk after after you know leaving the singing group in Plainfield, New Jersey, he, he he was like, "Hey, I'm I'm this is me." You know, he found who he was. You know, we all find that who we are, and and uh, no matter what we do, if we do a ballad, if we do a tempo song, or if we rip it, it's funk. So beyond the X's and O's, so to speak of what funk music is and this has been repeated before but you know it's a deep feeling that you you know that you just have that you just have it it's not anything you can describe but you know it when you have it and uh you can take for example now i like bruno mars uh as an artist uh i don't think necessarily he's a funk artist I think he's a pop artist. And I think when he attempted to do funk, it showed that he wasn't funky, <laughs> you know? So that's my point. You know, I'm not being disparaging. I'm just saying and using him as an example uh, because doing that live show, I mean, doing the show, was it the Grammys or something when uh, Time and, and Bruno were side to side mm -hmm. doing their thing? The Time, that was a stark difference. Are you, okay. Come back. Tommy, I lost I lost you when you're oh, you uh, talking about um, Bruno versus the time at the Grammys. Oh, oh yeah. I was just saying there's a stark difference between what funk is and what it wasn't, you know, pretty much. Um they live, breathe, are funk. Uh, and Bruno Mars is a great artist, but he's not a funk artist. Uh, and a lot of people got on me about that because I made a little comment on Facebook. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, you're hating, you're hating. No, no. I mean, if anybody knows about funk, it's me. So uh, I think that my comment was honest, but I was not disparaging to Bruno because I love that cat, man. He's bringing live music. I mean, who else is doing that stuff these days? Nobody. You know what I mean? Nobody's bringing live music back like that. 
I appreciate that with the horns, the whole live aspect of what he's doing. It's exciting. You know, I love that. But don't say he's funky because he's not. You know, and, and uh, that's my point. Either you're funky or you're not. And you know it. And I don't even think he would say that he was a funk artist if, if, if he would be asked that straight up. I think that he would say he appreciates the funk and that he, uh, he knows what it is. Uh, and my whole point in saying all this is that you know what it is. If you're an artist, if you're a funk artist, then that's who you are. And uh, I mean, everything is, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's called funky today. That doesn't necessarily mean that it is. And there's varying degrees of it. There's varying levels of funk. There's varying, you know, there's, there's different levels. There's different areas of funk. So in essence, it's just a feeling and you gotta know it. You know it when it is. Yeah, don't ever throw funk around lightly. That's what I say. No, don't throw it around lightly, man. Respect no, the funk. Respect <laughs> the funk. No, no doubt. No doubt. Um, I also like to ask uh, Tommy: Is you know the, the show's called Truth and Rhythm? So you know when you do your thing, what to you is how do you find truth in the rhythm? Truth in your art. Anyway, uh, I don't know how much you heard, but I just wanted to. Um, I wanted to say that I have several collaborators on my record and when the music hits me in a certain kind of way, I can vibe with it and I write the lyrics and, uh, and I know that, uh, I know it's very honest what I do, you know, when I, when I come, this is why it takes me so, this is why this project in particular is so important to me because each song has its own, as you say, rhythm has its own vibe to it. And uh, new, no two songs are alike. And I wanted to actually, it's actually a history of my experiences through the, the last 40 years. You know, I have funk songs, I have R&B songs, I have uh, a song that may reference Seal or Sting on there. You know, I have, um, who were my big influences back then, as far as the police. I forgot to mention them. We listened to them constantly on the buses back then. So uh, those experiences and those, uh, those historical references uh, infuse my music now. And it's honest, it's, it's true. It's me at this stage of my career, at this stage, you know, uh, of doing what I've done for the last 40 plus years, I feel confident, I feel good about what I'm doing. And the truth is in the rhythm, the truth is in what you, what you write. And actually it all comes through you as a person. I think uh, irrespective of the music, irrespective of your art, you know, if you are honest, then whatever you do is going to be, in, is going to be honest, you know, if you are, if, if, if you're an honest person or if you come uh, in your life as a, a person who is straight up, no nonsense, and you present yourself as with no bullshit, then that's going to be infused in everything you do. That's going to be, that's going to come out in anything you do. It's going to be automatically honest. And that's where I come from. That's where I'm coming from. Now at this stage, I, I feel better than I have in years, which is why I think the music I just created and the music that I'm doing, and even with the cameo stuff, is going to be the best. Because now I'm, I'm cool, I'm calm, I'm, I'm, I'm great. You know, I'm not stressing i'm not on the road traveling and all this i mean there's a certain level you get to where you're in that space that's a good space to create and be who you are and that's where i'm at right now excellent who's, who's uh playing the music on there uh well i've got two guys i've got a guy lee hurst 
who's a producer out of Atlanta, who I've used uh, before. And uh, there's a, a collective, a production collective in Chicago who I'm using on, on a couple of songs. Lee Hurst is doing a couple of songs. I've, I, I did uh, uh, one of the songs, but I, I wrote all the lyrics on the, on the songs, except for the one song that I'm releasing that I told you about earlier with uh, Leon, Leon Silvers and his son, Leon IV, uh, did the uh, Life to Remember is the name of the ballad. Uh, so every other song, every other track, which is, there's seven tracks on there. And I, uh, I wrote the lyrics to all those, but I've got great musical collaborators, man. You know, and these guys, you know, they came in and say, hey, man, you know, oh, actually, no, uh, the, the Chicago producers actually wrote those, they produced and wrote the lyrics to the two songs that are on the tracks. And when I send you the, the, um, the songs, I'll let you know, uh, put a little notations uh, next to them so you can know who's uh, who's who and uh, and did what. Perfect. I really look forward to hearing that. I wish you all the best luck with that project. And uh, hopefully some Cameo music too will be in uh, both of our futures. And future yes, absolutely. Listeners. We're, we're hoping, you know, we was in the studio. There's some, there's a, there's some very good possibilities. I listened to three songs maybe that uh, that we're going to be looking at and hopefully we can get back in there uh i'll be in atlanta for some time in the coming months so i'm sure i'll be in the studio uh and uh, we want to get this out soon we want to get it out soon excellent uh before we uh wind it up tommy is there anything else you want to uh, plug you know where and how can people best uh you know connect with you and keep up with with tommy jenkins Oh, okay. Well, uh, they can reach out to me on Facebook. I'm, uh, I'm easily accessible. Uh, just search Tommy Jenkins. I'm, I'm there. Uh, also, my, uh, the song that I just released uh, is on Bandcamp. You can search Tommy Jenkins on Bandcamp and pick up the single. Uh, check it out. And I'm on Twitter, you know, Instagram, all of that stuff. Um, but I'll be having a website. I'm having actually, my website is being developed right now and I will make that formally available when that's finished uh, for, for news on what I'm doing personally, what Cameo is doing and <clears throat> all things Tommy Jenkins. Fantastic. Well, Tommy, it's been a, a great pleasure. I mean, it's really been a thrill actually just getting to talk about not only you know not only meet you but talk about the cameo history and the legacy and all that so you know thank you so much quite an honor well thanks scott i'm um, uh, happy to do it it was great talking to you and uh i hope we get a chance to do something again in the future man that'd be great that's a, that's a deal um, cool. <clears throat> with that it's time to wrap up this edition of truth and rhythm um sincere thank you to our viewers and listeners be sure to look out for upcoming Truth and Rhythm episodes and catch up with previous installments at funkinstuff.net on YouTube, iTunes, and other leading podcast providers. If you're an artist or music industry figure interested in being a guest on this program or a fan wanting to see a particular person interviewed, send, send me an email and uh, let's see if we can make it happen. Um, there were some technical challenges during this particular interview and uh, I appreciate you bearing with us on that. And uh, we always do the best we can. So with that, on behalf of Tommy. Hey. Take good care. Thank you, everybody. All right. Uh, the, the, the love and sorry for all the technical stuff that happened, man. You know what I mean? That's, that's hey, the way it goes sometimes. That makes it even more funky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until next time, on behalf of Tommy, this is Scott Goldfine saying... Keep on vibrating to the rhythm of the one.